I won't waste time with any other bad jokes. I will simply say, welcome to Android application hacking. And we are going to be treated to an awesome presentation by Gabrielle Botball. Thank you. So thank you very much, uh, everyone, for being here and for attending my talk. So today I'm going to talk about uh, Android application hacking. So I'm going to briefly present myself. So I am an offensive security consultant at Desjardins, which is the biggest um, financial cooperative in North America. And uh, I am also a member of the CINAC Artemis Red Team. I won multiple awards, and uh, I won one yesterday, so I'm very happy. I won Woman of the Year Hacker yesterday. <laughs> Thank you. And so uh, first we are going to, um, I'm going to explain how I trained myself to become a pen tester. Then uh, I'm going to mention uh, briefly what is pen test. And uh, we are going to uh, see how to set up the lab because it's a big important part of uh, this pen test. And finally, I will share um, useful resources. And also, uh, I will provide a link for you in the end uh, because um, uh, because you you will have uh, a lot of uh, comments and you will see a lot of things on the screen that you will might not be able to remember. <laughs> so uh, you will be able to uh, have the presentations and the slides at home in the end. Okay, so uh, how how this blog became uh, a personal brand? So first, I was uh, an actress. <laughs> And uh, um, I trained myself to, to become a pen tester. And, but during the time when I was an actress, I was you know, um, always passionate about computer. I was doing websites about uh, theater and things like this. And so uh, 10 years ago, uh, my passion uh, about uh, computer science became uh, a job, and I became an application developer. And so. At this time, I got hired uh, at a big security comp uh, at a big um, IT company, and at this time, I was um, torn about uh, the security of the apps I was delivering. And uh, it was not um, at this time. It was also developer was not really responsible for the security of the apps they were delivering. So I decided to um, uh, check out how to secure an app and about uh, cyber security. And that's how I discovered pain test. And um, for practical and economical reason, I trained myself to become a pen tester and I documented it on, on the blog. And so uh, the goal was to uh, get hired as a pen tester. So it was a risk because it's, uh, you know, outside of traditional methods. But uh, risks are part of any enterprise. So, And so my program uh, was based on the science education concept that you can see on the screen. It's called uh, Apprenance. And it's a concept inspired by uh, lifelong learning. OK. So. This program was uh, made in six steps. So I took uh, inspiration from uh, academic programs, and uh, I compared this from uh, skills with, from job postings, and uh, I made a pass in six steps. So CTF, cat capture the flag um, to learn by doing. Uh, conferences to have you know, different points of view uh, on cybersecurity. MOOCs and tutorials to have the theory, and uh, summer schools to um, you know have contact with uh, academic professionals and meet experts in the field, and also volunteering to uh, to meet other infosec enthusiasts. And finally, uh, I took an internship to put all this in practice. And so I added um, an analysis grid of uh, you know transferable. Uh, skills from previous experience because it's always, uh, uh, you know, s uh, some skills are uh, you, you got from previous experience are actually applicable to cybersecurity. Like, uh, for example, uh, when I was a receptionist, uh, I had a, a sense of details and um, uh, anticipation. I'm sorry, I'm going to remove my mask. 
I think I, it's better. And um, also, I learned about confidentiality. So this was definitely some skills that are transferable to uh, cybersecurity. Okay, so uh, what is pen test? So you can see the definition on the screen. But uh, to go into more detail, uh, we can say that a pen test allows us to um, identify flows at the application layer, networks, and system, as well as the possibilities of compromising physical security ba barriers. OK. <laughs> uh, I'm going to let this uh, so that you can read a little. So even if uh, Google Play carefully check the App Store, uh, many apps are still vulnerable or even dangerous. So on 13th of July of this year, uh, a family of apps by uh, Kelly Tech was installed uh, 3 million times on Android. And so it was a malware family. And it was uh, basically subscribing users to premium services without their knowing and so their consent. Uh, and so it took around six months for Google to remove uh, the application uh, of this company. Okay, I have some figures as well. So these are really impressive. So we can see here that mobile apps are more and more targeted. And uh, actually the two one that really uh, shocked me are 75% uh, phishing sites uh, are specifically aimed at uh, mobile devices. And uh, there's an increase of 465% of in exploited DRD mobile, mobile vulnerabilities. And uh, yeah, all, all the other uh, figures are really impressive as well. So today, uh, we are going to talk about the methodology for Android App Pen Test. Uh, I'm not going to talk about uh, certificate pinning because this is um, you know, out of scope for this presentation. But I will give you uh, resources in the end to learn about it because I know it can be interesting for bug hunters. And uh, again, as I will show many comments, uh, be assured that you will have uh, my slide afterwards. Uh, this is going to be available in my kit book in the end. So what is Android App Pentest? So it's a type of pen test, and it's a part of a pen test list that we provide as pen testers. So um, most pen testers are usually uh, generalists. So uh, they do network, uh, Wi-Fi pen test, web pen test, and some also special, uh, uh, want to specialize. So they will do uh, probably cloud and else. And so uh, Android uh, and mobile application can be, can be a specialization as well. And so uh, what is Android App Pen Test? So Android Mobile is, um, is a, is a, Android is an, oh, sorry, is an, uh, how do you say, um, exploitation, um, yes, an OS system, sorry, based on a modified uh, version of uh, the Linux kernel. And so it was uh, developed by Google. And so the most used language for Android is uh, Java. And since uh, 2019, Kotlin became the official language, but it's also a simplified version of Java. So you can use also uh, C++ or Python, but they will not going be fully supported. So how, how is this different from uh, other pen tests? So most of the time, uh, we are going to uh, analyze an executable and uh, like, uh, for instance, for a web app pen test, usually you get a URL and sometimes uh, accounts, depending on uh, the methodology that you use, if it's a uh, black box or white box or gray box. And uh, you, for an external pen test, you will have an IP address and you will rarely have uh, executable to analyze or, or code. Okay, so let's dive in uh, Android app pen test. So first, so there's a, this uh, process that you can see on the screen. And so first we have to uh, define the legal matters with uh, the customer. So this is going to be the planning phase. 
So just like any uh, uh, use other pen test. Then you have the reconnaissance phase, which is also a usual phase in a pen test. So here, for instance, uh, for uh, Android app, you could um, check uh, uh, info uh, on the company on the Google store. And uh, you will have also static analysis. So you can uh, look at the code, check for specific element there. And uh, you have also dynamic analysis, which is the one where you will uh, intercept the traffic and look for vulnerabilities. And uh, finally, we can make a report, like we have to make a report to, uh, to present and explain the findings. And uh, I will go more uh, in detail uh, on this phase later. So, as I mentioned, the lab is very, very important. It's a, uh, uh, well, this park is uh, much bigger than uh, in any other pen test. Um, so how to set up a lab? So this is the tool that you are going to need. You are going to need the JADIX, which is a tool that will uh, decompile uh, the code for the analysis of the code. You are going to need uh, ADB. Uh, to interact with the device or uh, the VM, and in our case, it will be we are going to use a VM in this example. And uh, you can also use uh, Android Studio. So this is what uh, is going to um, help us to make the emulator. And um, uh, for Android, um, uh, and also we are going to use Burp Suite, which is the one for uh, to intercept uh, request and response. So just like in web. Pen test. We will use uh, Burp Suite as well. Okay. So this is the instance. So that's why I was saying you, know, you probably won't remember the command afterwards. <laughs> uh, so um, this setup here is made for Ubuntu, uh, but uh, you can check the resources uh, at the end of the matrix here, and you will have uh, info for other systems. And so for uh, JADIX, you will need uh, to have Java installed. And you can use the, this command on the screen. And uh, uh, for uh, the last one, the last command will launch it. It will launch the, the GUI. And for ADB, you have also the command as well here to install it. And for Android Studio and Burp Suite, you just need to go to the link and uh, follow the instruction. And it's going to be pretty straightforward. So it's uh, time for a little video. So we just have to. Okay. It's the one. Now, yeah. I have to open it with. Uh... Sorry about that. <laughs> it's always. Like you make video for uh, to be ready, but it doesn't work either. <laughs> okay, great, perfect. So this is, oops. This is Android Studio, and so you have to um, select a phone. And uh, so be be careful on checking the um, the proper image for your device. Uh, you. Usually, it's mentioned in the Android manifest. I will uh, talk about this later. And some apps, you know, they may not work on some image or device. And uh, the, the version can also be found on the App Store. So you just have to select a system image. And uh, then you, you will have the API version. You, you, you rename it. Usually, you can use, you know, the name of the app you are testing or something, really something that is more convenient for you. And then you will just finish. And it's going to create the virtual device for you. And then you just have to launch it. And there you go, it's launched. So it, it's, it takes a while to, to, to be launched. So I'm going to, oops, advance a little. And there you go, it's all set up. So it's just like you have a, a virtual machine and everything. Okay. 
Let's go back here. Perfect. So now uh, I'm going to show you so, uh, how to uh, configure the lab with Burp. So this is another video, and I did it again. <laughs> okay, I'm going to open with VLC. Okay. Perfect. Uh, so this is, uh, so you have to go to the proxy tab and uh, you have to uh, import a CA certificate. And so you can choose which format. I usually choose, uh, so the best format is there and you just have to change the name of the extension. So you can name it whatever, but uh, you have to put CER in the end. So you can save it, remember where you saved it. And then you just have to uh, drag and drop it in the, in the phone. Okay. And then you have to uh, actually install it in the phone. So you can go to the settings. And it's usually, so it can be different depending on the device you are using, but it's usually in the security part of the settings. So you can install from the SD card, and it's usually going to be in the download, not this one, the internal storage download, like this one here. Okay, and you can give it a name, whatever you feel you like. And it's going to ask you for uh, a lock screen password. So you can put a very safe password, just like me, one, two, three, four, or you can be uh, more wise. Okay. And so I, I usually switch off the notification because it can be annoying and it's just a VM anyway, so. And it says burp installed on the phone, so you're good to go. And so you have to go to uh, the burp again, and you can bind, uh, you can select all interfaces. Uh, I choose for 8082 because I use burp for web pen test as well, so uh, it's better if you want to use burp for both pen tests, you can have uh, web and Android as well. And then you have to set up in uh, Android Studio. So you go to the proxy and you have uh, the, the port and everything. So be careful to uh, click apply because I did it uh, once I forget to click apply and uh, it was not intercepting anything. So uh, just, uh, I'm stressing this out here. <laughs> so that you gain some time. And then you just need to uh, put the intercept on or check that it's on. And if you go on a web browser, you will see that your request is going to be intercepted. So you should be good for your, for your test. Okay. And we are good to go. Okay, so. I'm going to go back on my presentation. So the vulnerable apps I used for the example are Piva, which is a purposefully uh, insecure and vulnerable Android application, and also one called uh, Injured Android. So the URLs are on the screen. Uh, and uh, I have to stress out that you must always have the authorization of the owner of an app to, uh, to test it, uh, otherwise it's going to be illegal, so be careful with this. Okay, so uh, during the um, static analysis phase, uh, you have to check the Android manifest and uh, also the file strings.xml. You can also enumerate databases. You have a lot of tools on GitHub for this purpose. And of course, uh, it's very important to, to check for uh, sensitive data. So first, uh, I'm going to show some example in the Android manifest file. So, uh, this file is a file where the developers uh, describe essential information about the app. So you will have uh, mentions like uh, the package name, 
the components, the permissions, uh, the hardware and software that are required by the app. And so, you know, as I mentioned earlier, to check for uh, the uh, version of the app that was needed. So this is where you are going to find it, which API you need. It's, it's going to be uh, uh, the min SDK version. So on the screen, you have uh, a list of permissions that are required by the vulnerable app Piva. And so the goal of the permission is uh, to protect uh, privacy of user. And so it's also um, to uh, allow the app to have access because it will need some of these permissions to work. So uh, let's say that uh, Piva is a social media app. Um, do you think it should be able to access your phone calls? Anyone? Okay, I see people nodding. Okay, so no, it's, uh, in my opinion, it shouldn't. Because in the case of a social media, media app, you know, it's always important to uh, check this permission. The Kelly Tech uh, malware app family I mentioned before had permissions to read text messages. So that's, that's how it was able to actually subscribe user to uh, premium content without their consent. So check, uh, you can have a link with all the permissions that are referenced right here. Okay, so uh, the allow backup flag uh, could allow an attacker to uh, backup the data of an app using ADB. And so uh, it's safer if it's as false, but it's uh, going to be enabled by default. So uh, in Piva, it is set to true. And uh, the deb de debuggable one is going also to be off by default. And so it will allow the app to be uh, debugged. And so an, uh, an attacker also could use it to uh, access app uh, and data. So it, it should be set to false as well. And uh, so, you know, sometimes a customer will give you uh, the dev version of the application. So this will be set to true, obviously. Uh, so in this case, what I do is that I mention in the report as informational uh, that, uh, 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 it, it, it is on and that it should be set to off. And so during the production phase, they will uh, remember that they have to put it off. And so in Piva, it is set to true as well. But I think Piva was supposed to be the you know, production version of the, of the app. So. so uh, these are the uh, exportable activities in, from Piva. So, Activities are screens that are, uh, so they are actually screens of the app. And so some activity, activities should not be exported because it would mean that would, they would be um, accessed from outside of the app. So you can check if uh, they disclose sensitive data. And so in our example, we have uh, three framed activities here that are exportable. Okay, and so uh, with, uh, so now we are going to uh, check the string file from, uh, this one is from injured Android. And so it's always useful to check this file because, uh, so the location of this file is here, slash uh, res, slash values, and so it's strings.xml. And in our example, we have a goodie. Uh, this here is an API key, so you should not have this here. Okay, it's bad practice. Um, it should be stored securely outside of the app. And uh, so you definitely have to put this in your report. Okay. So uh, what is Firebase? So it's um, an app development platform uh, that is made by Google for Android. And so it's uh, supposed, it's, um, going to facilitate uh, the developers for uh, back end and you know, provide the features as well. So it's interesting to check Firebase endpoints and because it could have a bad configuration and it could give you some access to things that you shouldn't have access to. So um, you will, uh, 
you will have uh, you, so it's usually in the under in the in the strings XML file, and it's also possible to use automatic tools like Firebase Enum. And uh, on the screen, you can see that uh, injured Android has a data uh, a Firebase database URL here, like it's the framed one here. And uh, so it's definitely something that you should uh, check further. And so it's going to be possible also to use a, a tool called Firebase Scanner, and it will uh, identify configurations of uh, the Firebase instance. And this way you are going to be able to know uh, and to see if you can, if you're supposed to access the things that you're supposed to or not. So this is the sensitive. Uh, so the, uh, yes, so this is another video. Okay, <laughs> maybe I'm going to do it every time. <laughs> okay, there you go. So uh, this is uh, pretty useful to uh, check for uh, strings in um, JADX GUI. So you can check Firebase, for instance, and then you will have uh, everything where it will appear. So, and it's uh, this icon here is where you have to, to go to, to access it. So, uh, yes, uh, it's very important here uh, to check uh, for URLs, to check uh, for secret keys, credentials, uh, you know, comments. Sometimes uh, developers leave things in the comments, like a password for tests or things like this. Uh, strings and, uh, like, um, you know, API, API uh, underscore key. So, yeah. So, uh, these are some tools for the static analysis. So you have Firebase Enum uh, that is available on GitHub. You have Firebase uh, Scanner that I just mentioned before. And you have Cloud Enum as well, which is uh, useful to uh, enumerate databases or public resources that are in the cloud. So sometimes you can find also AWS secret key. And so you can try to use it to access uh, the resources on AWS. So it's uh, definitely worth mentioning as well in a report because it's uh, similar to what we saw uh, uh, with Firebase instances. So now for the uh, dynamic analysis part. Uh, so this is the part where we will intercept the traffic with Burp and then analyze it. So uh, we can check for uh, tab jacking. So it's the click jacking equivalent of uh, but in mobile app. So also, are you able to uh, capture screens that contains uh, sensitive data? And uh, of course, check uh, the OWASP top 10 because uh, all those vulnerabilities are going to be also possible here. And uh, so now let's see an example of a vulnerability. So it's a video. Okay. Yeah, I did it for the last one. <laughs> okay, so this is, uh, let's pretend, okay, I'm just gonna pause for a minute. So let's pretend that this screen you are going to see is, um, is a secret, like uh, an account information, like on a banking app, okay? So this, this screen will, is going to be all your account information, your balance, or anything sensitive you could have in a banking app. So let's say this is a screen that shows sensitive information like this. So, so this page here is the sensitive one. So you go back to another application. And then, you see, this is in the background, and you still have access to these pages. So there's actually, uh, you should not be able to do this if, if it's a banking app with uh, uh, your, uh, you know, bank account number and everything, you should not be able to, be, to see this. So this is something that we have to report. Okay. Mm. Yeah. 
sorry. <laughs> so you, you can use, uh, so th these are automatic tools, but uh, it's like any other time, uh, pen test. Uh, this does not replace your eyes and your brain. So do not only rely on automatic tools. Uh, verify uh, every finding because you could have false positive and check for other things that uh, automatic tools could not detect. So you have MobSF, which is great because it does a complete scan. Uh, you have, uh, it's going to check uh, for, uh, you know, it's really the automation part of the static analysis phase. It's going to check for permissions. It's going to see if the traffic is properly encrypted. Uh, it's going to check also for possible buffer overflows and also for hard coding secret and um, more, many, many more things. And uh, Quark is, uh, is a tool that is able to find uh, common security vulnerabilities and it can create proof of concepts. So it's very um, a, a good gain of time for tab tracking evidence because it's have a, a box that is all made for this. Okay, so now uh, on the report. So this is the usual structure of any pen test report. So you have the executive summary, which is the part uh, for the executive of a company. And so uh, you will have high level explanations with no technical details and a global posture. You know uh, why the findings and the attack combination could impact uh, the company. And so here is an example. So this is the vulnerability we saw in the dynamic analysis part. So we have a title, which is uh, information disclosure through background read screens of the app. And uh, we have a CVSS score. And so here, so I just put uh, in order to provide visual transition in the interface, Android records a screenshot of the current application. And so, uh, this explains the uh, Android uh, feature, so to speak. And then you go to these captures can contain user information or other sensitive data. And so this is going to uh, explain more what happens in our context. And now uh, on this part here, we have the remediation. So here it's to use the flag secure that will present, uh, it will prevent uh, to have uh, sensitive data. It will like uh, not show. And so uh, we have a screen here as an evidence. Uh, so uh, also for the screen, uh, be careful to hide sensitive information when you, before you send the uh, report. Uh, make sure that the image, uh, you know, I, as I said, the image would have uh, like a bank account number, make sure that it's uh, stripped from the image and make sure that uh, this uh, anonymization cannot be reserved to its initial state because it's, uh, it's sensitive information. And now for the resources. So these are, uh, so I put together a big list of resources. So I'm going to present it. Uh, this is a list uh, to practice. So you have uh, vulnerable apps here. You have uh, also a specific track on Hack the Box that is very, very interesting for, uh, uh, for a mobile app. So you have also courses and uh, you have great tutorials. And uh, I also put the TCM security course here because it's very, very good. Uh, it's um, only, uh, it's 2099, so if you have some cash to spend, all the other ones are free, but if you have some cash to spend on it, I would really uh, recommend this one as well. Okay. And uh, here are some good reads. The uh, OWASP MSTG is actually the reference for mobile app pen test. And so uh, here is a list of tools. So the first one uh, is actually a huge list from NAMSEC of uh, different tools for uh, uh, mobile app pen test. And these, we have also Quark that I mentioned uh, earlier, and we have also MobSF. So to go further, and I promised, here is a resource for a certificate pinning. 
And of course, you can uh, get this slide uh, as, uh, as I promised as well on my git book. Uh, so uh, this, is, this is my git book right here, csbygb.gitbook.io. And so just wait a few days and uh, you will see my, uh, my presentation after the Hacker Summer Camp. And if you want to have fun <laughs> and see if you remember something from today, here is a quiz. And it will also be provided in the Gitbook as well, along with the slide. And thank you, everyone. So thank you for your attention. I want to thank the whole uh, Diana Initiative team for your kindness and your support every step of the way. It's uh, really a great experience to talk there. And I want to uh, say thank you also to Nathaniel for your availability and your help on this presentation. Now I'm def whoops. Now I'm definitely intrigued. I have multiple Android phones at home, old ones. Now I'm really curious of looking at some of the old Android stuff. Um, cuz I have very old Android phones. <laughs> Um, this was this was awesome. Does anybody have any questions? You all just absorbed everything perfectly. <laughs> Come on, somebody. There's one. Can you go up to the mic, please? Thanks for an excellent presentation. Um, I just wanted to ask, have you got a, an interesting bug that you've come across, one that you can tell us about? Sorry? An interesting bug that you've found and exploited that you can In tell us about. Um, like a finding or something? Yeah, yeah. Uh, the one that I find the most is the one I actually put in the example. So, uh, and uh, it's usually going to be uh, really sensitive uh, info uh, on the screen and I will no, pretty much always find it. And also, sometimes uh, I have uh, secrets in code. So that's why I always try to be careful with uh, secrets, like put it separately from the code. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for your question. It, it is fascinating that in the year 2022, which is when, by the way, that, that was George Jetson's birth year. George Jetson was born in 2022. Um, you all know who the Jetsons are, right? The, anyway, but yeah, we still find credentials and secrets in code and comments, as you mentioned. Um, I just, I wonder how many times a developer is just happily going along. They go to submit something and they go, oops, oh God, delete that comment, you know. Anyway, this was an excellent, excellent talk. Thank you so much for contributing to the success and to everyone here at the Diana Initiative. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you.